Hi, I'm Mina Malik Hussain and this is The Coffee Table and today we have a wonderful show as always lined up for you today because this is a show where all of us are going to be learning something new which is always one of my favorite things to do on this show. <laughs> Did you know that the 20th of May is Global Accessibility Awareness Day? I didn't know that but now I do and now you do as well. Over 1 billion people all over the world have some kind of disability or another. There are many different categories of disability and there are different ways to classify what a disability really means. But global accessibility awareness is very specifically to do with people with disabilities access to the internet and to mobile apps and to technology and how technology needs to be inclusive for people with disabilities and how an absence of this inclusivity creates a lot of unforeseen problems that a lot of regularly able people often don't consider. And I'm so excited today to be welcoming on set two experts to talk to us all about Global Accessibility Awareness Day and what an inclusive online space means. And we are so excited to be welcoming Mohammed Atif Sheikh Sahab, who is the Executive Director of the Special Talent Exchange Program, commonly known as STEP, which he set up in 1997. Atif is a disability inclusive development advocate and STEP has the honor of being the only disabled people's organization in South Asia, which has also been appointed as a special consultative status to the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations, amongst many, many other wonderful things that Atif has, do has done for people with disabilities in the country and so much tireless advocacy work that he's done which is something that he should tell us about and you know not me reading it all out <laughs> over here and we are also very excited to be welcoming Sayyid Muhammad Ali Shah who is the country director for CBM Pakistan. CBM is a disability management organization with offices all around the world. Muhammad Ali is a humanitarian professional who also represents the humanitarian country team for the INGO forum in Nigeria. Hmm. Welcome to the show, illustrious gentlemen. <laughs> Atif, let's start with you and tell me a little bit about STEP. So you set up STEP in 1997, which means that the organization has been working for, you know, well over two decades now. And um, tell me about what led you to sort of set up an organization like this. Thank you very much, Mina. I'm super excited to be part of this show. And, and um, it's a long story, like yeah. how Step was established, but I'll be short for, the, for this uh, again. In 1987, when I was a student in high school, I realized that children with disabilities, especially students with disabilities, face a lot of barriers in their life, yeah. including infrastructure barrier, communication barrier, negative attitudes, and policies which are not very really friendly for them to be included in the school system, in the employment opportunities, in every walk of life. Mm -hmm. So with uh, a group of friends from the same school having different disabilities, we decided to establish a self-help group mm -hmm. in 1997 to collect information mm -hmm. about the services available for persons with disabilities in the country and provide it to the, those people with disabilities who are confined in their houses. You know, right. in Pakistan, like estimatedly 10% population of people and are having people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And they are, most of them, they are confined or imprisoned in their houses right. because there is no accessibility at all. So we decided to establish this group and to support those people like who are not, who are not able to access opportunities. Mm -hmm. By the time we actually this blew up and expanded all over the country and it became uh, a largest disabled people organization, which is our organization run by persons with disabilities themselves. Then we decided in 2008 that like why all other organizations, NGOs, INGOs are working on disability, why not we should do it for ourselves? Mm. Then we got the team and so like you can see the work we are doing in the country now and we are connected internationally contributing in all the policy platforms all across the world and we have been working with the government of Pakistan for uh, rights-based legislation on disability now. 
Absolutely. And that, um, the point that you had about policy is something that's very important and do want to talk more about, but also about accessibility and how if 10% of our population does have one form of disability or another, sometimes more than one, a lot of those people are confined to their homes. And I think that the, what you said about students is also really crucial. And these are all things I want to kind of come back to elaborate on a little bit more. But before we do that, hi, Mama Ali, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Welcome you. to the show. <laughs> so, Mamadani, tell me about CBM and the work that CBM does and here in Pakistan. And I know that it's a it's an international organization, but I think a lot of people aren't very familiar with it. Sure. Thank you very much, first of all. Uh, good day to everyone. And thanks for inviting me to this uh, show, especially to discuss the very important topic, Global Accessibility Awareness Day, yeah. GAAD. And I hope this conversation will be followed by many more conversations in media and elsewhere as well. As you already know that persons with disabilities have always been part of our, our societies. They have struggled to create space for themselves for being recognized by the systems and above all for being accepted and integrated into the mainstream societies. Okay. In conjunction to this, CBM is almost one of the oldest organizations of this world. It was established in 1807. Uh, I'm sorry, I mean 1907. Oh, and in Pakistan, oh, wow. that's working... very old. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And in Pakistan, we are working since 1968. Oh, that wow. makes us 52 years of age. So it's an organization committed to improving the quality of life of people with disabilities hmm. in the poorest communities, irrespective of race, gender, and religious beliefs. Yes. And CBM advocates very strongly towards the inclusive society, space for everyone, education for everyone, equal rights, information, and accessibility for everyone. Yes. Now, based on our 100 years of professional experience, CBM addresses both poverty as a cause and as a consequence of disability and works in partnership mm. with local and national civil society organizations yeah. to create an inclusive society for all. Mm. Mm. This is a little brief about CBM Pakistan. No, I think that, glad that you brought up poverty because when I was thinking about uh, accessibility and the various challenges that people with disabilities face, poverty for at least developing countries is a massive issue. And it, it is a massive consideration to take into consideration <laughs> to take into account because like you said I think that that could you could you sort of then clarify for us how poverty is is exacerbated by disability and also sometimes disability causes poverty so it's a sort of you know sort of a, it's 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 not a very good back and forth uh, what I would say here is that you know the Pakistan population is almost 224 million people out of which the consensus that was given by the United Nations was 13% of out of all the population are people with disabilities, living with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And even if we take 10%, not 13%, with a yes. little more acute cases, it comes to 24 million people who are having various types of disabilities. Now, definitely when they are confined because of their societies, because of the um, stereotype societies, the education uh, systems, mm. um, that is where pro poverty comes in. Now, empowerment is one thing that needs to be given to these people yep. and to make them realize and advocate for them to come out of their disability and accepting acceptance of disabilities. Mm. Mm. So that is one way of addressing uh, the poverty. Now, disability inclusive development is a framework for all CBM initiatives and the key themes which drives the activities to impact the work right. uh, of the persons with disabilities. Hmm. Yeah, and yeah. with a global network of partners that we have, including in Pakistan, uh, CBM seeks to build and promote an inclusive world in which all persons with disabilities enjoy their human rights and achieve their full potential. Yes. No, absolutely. And it's really important at this point to remember that a lot of people with disabilities need particular kinds of specific support in order to 
I don't want to say overcome because it implies a sense of something dreadful that has happened to you. But the thing is that it is perfectly possible to lead a healthy, dignified, productive life, given that you get the support that you need. And that is oftentimes the only thing that's holding anybody with a disability back. So, um, Atif, coming back to you, tell me a little bit about Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Like, why do we need to raise awareness about global accessibility? And like, what are the common issues that people People with disabilities face when it comes to when it comes to the conversation about accessibility. So I think first of all, let's start with what does accessibility even mean? Hmm. That, that's what I was about to say. Like before coming to the topic of accessibility or why we are observing this International Global Day on the, for creating awareness on accessibility, let me give you a little background of the understanding disability. Yes. Whenever we talk about disability, there, hmm. there are two concepts come to our mind: the health or the poverty or charity. So. Now, in the last few decades, since we have been talking about the rights-based approaches for persons with disabilities, the perspective has changed. Mm. So before understanding disability, we have to understand that disability is a different lifestyle. Yes. It's a different way of living. Let me give you a very interesting anecdote. Like, um, do you come to studio on a vehicle, on any car? Is that like, is that, yes. you don't walk from your home to the studio. No. You always come on a car, on a transport, on a vehicle, which has wheels and some chairs inside it. So you are using a wheelchair, but your wheelchair is a different style. Yes. So like it has, different, it has clear, clear roads, traffic lights, all the rules for your wheelchair. But for the wheelchair which are being used inside, they don't have access to anything. They don't have access to corridors, they don't have accessible ramps. So we have to understand that disability is a different way of living and we have to create an environment which is accessible for everyone, which is inclusive for everyone so that everybody will be included in the society. So far for last many years, from last maybe centuries, we have been trying to fix the human being. We have been identifying disability in the human beings, which is yeah. wrong, which was wrong, which has been like now understood that that was not correct. We have to find limitations, barriers, or disabilities in the environment. So the emphasis need, needn't necessarily be on fixing a person, but fixing the environment around the person, so that things are just not things don't get in the way for that person. The way that we've adapted our environment to suit us, the sort of majority of people who are similarly able, it's it's not fair that we then sort of leave differently abled people to kind of fend for themselves. And I think that that is such an important point. We're going to take a very quick break here at this junction. We'll be back in a flash. Stay with us. Welcome back to the coffee table. We're having such a riveting conversation about Global Accessibility Awareness Day and differently abled people. And what does accessibility mean even? You know, And what do we need to be doing to make the world a better and more inclusive space for all kinds of people in it? And it's really wonderful to be talking to Mohammed Atif Sheikh, who is the executive director for the Special Talent Exchange Program, and Sayyid Mohammed Ali Shah, who is the country director for disability management organization, CBM, here in Pakistan. So before the break, Atif, we were talking about sort of defining and talking about how we perceive differently abled people and notions of accessibility. And I also know that when we're talking about Global Accessibility Awareness Day, we also need to sort of take into account that disability is also, from what I understand, divided into modes. And then there's permanent disability, there's temporary disability, and then there's sort of situation-based disability. And now we're sort of going towards the more sort of tech aspect of global awareness, accessibility awareness day. Because from what I understand, a lot of the accessibility that we're talking about is then technological, because that's just the sort of nature of the world that we live in now. Sure. Um, I will start again from the point where <laughs> I will start from that same point where I left it before the break. Uh, actually, uh, disability is again, I would uh, emphasize that we have to understand from the social perspective. Yeah. And, this, we, and, and before, like again, coming to that 
specific thing. Let me clear about it and make clear about the jargons we use. Like we always mm. use special people. Yes. Really able people. Like challenge people, so we don't need to use all these jargons. Very like, important. It doesn't matter at all. But but to identify the population, the need of this particular population, yeah. we have to use the right jargon, and yeah. that is persons with disabilities. First really first approach. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, person, then their abilities or inabilities or disabilities. So persons with disabilities is the correct terminology. Like, it, it has another interesting incident in my life. That people call me that, don't use this disabled or person with disability. You are differently able. Then I said, like, everybody in this world is differently able than other. Like, it is disability is uh, diversity in, within itself. So everyone is differently able. Everyone yeah. is differently able. You are differently able than me. Ali Shah Sab is differently able than you. So everyone has a different abilities and capabilities and limitations. So we yes. have to identify people with disabilities with the person first approach. Yeah. Then coming to the accessibility issue. Actually, this topic is quite new. In the last few decades, the discussion on accessibility was started. I'm also representing Global Alliance on Assistive Technologies and Environment as a country representative in Pakistan. And that organization, along with STEP, has been advocating all over the world that now we need to understand accessibility of communication. Yes, absolutely. All the websites can be, all the information, the flood of information coming through the websites, search engines, or the mobile applications can be made accessible. And this is how people with visual impairment, they can access to the education and opportunities. Let me give you a very simple example. Mm. If I just turn off or disable the software in your computer, and ask you to type a letter, the operating system. You can't do anything without the operating system on your computer, on your laptop, on your yeah. MacBook. Yeah. So if I install one more software, that is JAWS or any voice screen reader, I can, if I install that software in the same laptop, blind people can hear the screen. Yeah. They can listen to the screen, the screen will speak up. They can access the information. This is how a large number of people with visual impairment across the world, and even in Pakistan, they are accessing education. Have you heard about recently, first ever blind magistrate in Pakistan, he got the like, competitive exams and got a uh, gold medal in it, mm. and he became the first blind magistrate. How is that yeah. possible? Because education, education, books, and uh, information through digital platforms, which Absolutely. are accessible, huh. which can be accessible. Similarly, for the visual impairment, we can have sign language on the news or important programs on the media so that they can access the information. If hmm. I would start speaking in French, uh, I'm sure that most of the people in Pakistan who are watching this program will be hearing impaired <laughs> because they don't understand, they don't understand French. But mm. if I have a sign language interpreter with me, the people who are known as hearing impaired, they can understand what we are talking today. So yes. it's all about interpreting language communication and creating accessible environment. Absolutely, and I think this is such a crucial thing because so much of our lives is spent via a device and communication is at the heart of everything. And when we are looking at, let's say, the internet, uh, we're not just using it for entertainment or we're not just using it to sort of, you know, surf the web. We're using it for business and we're using it for education and we're using it for information and government services and elections and voting and registrations. And, you know, now with the, with the pandemic, you know, we're using it to be registered for a vaccine. So there are so many things that people use their devices, their laptops, their mobiles for. And that's why accessibility for people with disabilities is so important because you just can't ignore this, you know, millions of people who have the same civil requirements as anybody else in a country. So, um, Muhammad Ali, what do you, does the CBM sort of do, run any programs to sort of help build awareness for this as well? Indeed, indeed we do. And just a brief recap, as you mentioned earlier, that there are 1 billion people in this world who are disabled. Yeah. Around 15% that makes the world population live with disability. Now, people with disabilities are the largest minority group. 
and 80% live in low and middle income countries. Furthermore, mm. they make up 20% of the world's poorest uh, people. Now, one of the major uh, components that CBM is working, and it has taken up a few years back, we are still working on it. The results are very positive, and we have been encouraged to uh, move further with it, is uh, what is known as inclusive eye health. Hmm. Eye health is there that, is, that CBM is doing, and now what we have included is made it inclusive. What right. it means is ensuring that eye care services are accessible and welcoming to all the members of the community, yeah. including people with sensory, physical, and intellectual mm -hmm. impairments, mm -hmm. and those with mental health conditions as well. Yeah. It also means proactively ensuring that people with long-term vision impairments assess their rights to wider opportunity in uh, rehabilitation, in health, education, livelihood, as well as, as, well as the social uh, inclusion. Yeah. Inclusive eye health is essential for reaching the poorest people. And it is one of the simplest ways. And it gives it has given accessibility to all the people, regardless of where they are living. You just need a device, a mobile phone. Once yeah. you get the application in it, you have a full access to, uh, uh, to the system. That is one of the major projects uh, that we have done. And this is sort of a common problem for a lot of people, a lot of women, for example, as well, where um, without an identity card, you can't really do anything. You can't have a bank account. You can't register your business. You can't even vote. And people with disabilities are, have every right to do all of those things just as much as anybody else does. Atif, your work with the Election Act of 2017 was so important here because I know that your advocacy work meant that polling stations became inclusive. Thousands of polling stations became inclusive spaces for people with disabilities to come and vote. And I think that that is phenomenal. Congratulations on that. That is another a very, very long story, but let me give you a very interesting outline of this whole effort. That in Pakistan, people with disabilities have, like, it's really difficult for them even to get the disability certificate. Mm. And then they go to the NAGRA or, or their computerized CNIC, computerized ID card, yeah. they have to show their disability certificate. So it takes uh, an age to get mm. uh, CNIC. I mean, the it's near anything new on it. And then, yeah. um, again, those uh, concessions and services which are being yeah. offered by the government to, for persons with disability. So it takes a lot of effort. So, first of all, I, I would appreciate that my colleagues, uh, so you know, Shah Sadan mentioned that CBM has initiated a project for making this process easier yes. for persons with disability. And then let me give you the background of this making elections inclusive. Not a single policy can be made inclusive until people with disabilities are not sitting on the same table oh, where yes, the decisions are Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you have to sit on the table to make policies inclusive, legislation inclusive, yeah. which affect their life, which affect their society, in the, or which affect their communities in the country. Quite so, right. bring people with disabilities in the decision making process, start right from participation in the elections. Yeah. Yeah. And for that, we have been working for the last almost step is working for the last almost one decade in collaboration with the election Commission of Pakistan and International Foundation for Electoral Systems. And we tried to advocate election commission. We work yeah. with them very closely. How we, how the election process, not mm. only the mm. polling station. Absolutely, because the thing if people with disabilities are not part of the election process, how will they vote for people who will be able to advocate for them? And it's it's it makes so much sense on one level and it it should be easier than this. Yeah, I'm sort of now ruminating on my own. We're going to take a very quick break at this juncture. Stay with us. Welcome back from the break to this wonderful conversation. We're talking about Global Accessibility Awareness Day, which is usually on the 20th of May. It's a fairly recent phenomenon because the conversation about accessibility with regards to people with disabilities is still a fairly new 
idea, which is sort of strange but true. And we have been in conversation with the executive director of the Special Talent Exchange Program, Muhammad Atif Sheikh, and Sayyid Muhammad Ali Shah, who is the country director for Disability Management Organization, CBM. Now, um, before the break, Atif, you were telling us about how you know inclusivity has so many different aspects. And we were talking about elections and voting and even having an ID card. And I know that a lot of times uh, it is an option to apply for an ID card on your computer. But again, coming back to the idea of accessibility and tech, the thing is that we often do not think about things. And we, when we talk about people with disabilities, we often don't tend to sort of factor in other kinds of disabilities where we're looking at, for example, a learning disability, somebody with dyslexia, for example, or, or somebody who you know, um, has some kind of you know, a, a motor condition where you need a specialized keyboard or you need an, an interface, a web interface that's very clean, that's easy to read, or if somebody needs, uh, you know, is not able to use a mouse but can only use a keyboard to access a website. And I think that these are these really, well, they're quite technical, but they're also like, now that one thinks about it, really kind of almost obvious things that we need to be looking at when we are talking about global accessibility and, and talking about internet and mobile apps and computer programs that everybody can use equally and fairly. Yeah. You know, uh, there was a huge issue of mobility of persons with disabilities. Yeah. And like, they were not accessing the schools because of the inaccessible infrastructure, inaccessible communication devices, they were inaccessible transportation. But, you know, I believe that it's a very common phrase that disasters create opportunities. And <laughs> after the COVID-19, we have learned that yeah. we can work on we can contribute from home. And people with disabilities who have a mobility issue, they can study at home. They can mm. work at home. Yes. That creates an opportunity for disabled people. But yeah. for that purpose, we need to make communication devices, communication technology, information yes. communication technology, very accessible in all aspects. And uh, the concept of smart cities has been emerging for the last more than a decade. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, what is that? Smart cities for hmm. yes, smart cities all is a project like which is making working with the governments in different countries to make all the information hmm. accessible for everyone, yeah. not only for persons with disabilities. For example, people who are not literate who can't read and write, yeah. they should have a opportunity to listen to information. Yeah. So they can understand them. People who are visually impaired, they should have captioning narrations in the even in the entertaining videos in news yes. channels everywhere so they can hear what's going on on the screen. Similarly yes. for the deaf people who need to have sign language interpretation in all the information which is being mm. disseminated on the internet. Yeah. So these are the multiple accessible formats which are being promoted by smart cities for all. And in smart cities, all the facilities, which we were, we were talk, just talking about elections, there are transportation, there yeah. education, there are health facility, a traveling, and a travel. So all facilities should be hmm. made accessible for everyone in all the aspects, which yeah. is the key purpose of this Google Awareness Day on accessibility. Hmm. And CBN and Many other international organizations, DPOs like SCAP Special Dialectic Program and other DPOs in the world, they are trying hard to make this mm. point that mm. it can make it permanently accessible yeah. for persons with disabilities. Nobody will be disabled and they will be part of the society. For this smart cities concept, we are working um, with the policymakers and uh, very uh, like uh, which at the point which we were talking about and actually before the break I will just come back to that point that DPO's uh, advocate were have been advocating with the election commission of Pakistan to include disabled people in the elections because they can't vote at all if the election process yes. is not yes. accessible. Yes. So very we had a, a lot of consultation exercises. They agreed and they included include making election process accessible in the strategic goals of election mm. Mm. And finally, in the election in 2017, there was clearly mentioned that the mm. electoral and political process to be made mm -hmm. inclusive for the person. Yes. But now, yes. today, when we are having a very important discussion on industry, yes. we 
this is really important to make this point that now yes. we have to fulfill our commitments. Yes. Quite right. We and to, to be able to and to be able to do it on that scale and on that level, I think, must have been really instructive for others to kind of realize that A, it's possible, and B, the effects of it are so sort of deeply felt. Now, uh, Mahmoud Ali, I know that you uh, mentioned poverty and disabilities and its connection with that. But I was also curious, and Atif also mentioned people who can't read and write. So do we count literacy also when we are talking about kinds of disabilities in the sense that things that interfere with somebody's normal access to a productive life. So does literacy count in that as well? Definitely, definitely literacy and uh, education level counts a yeah. lot in it. Yeah. Uh, that is why we also advocate for education, education mm. for mm. all. Mm. See, a child who is sent into a mainstream school where there are ramps, where there are the doors are wide enough for his wheelchair to mm be inside, he should have clear access and communication uh, with his peers, as well as with the teachers. Very clear accessibility towards the library and other facilities of the school. Yeah. And then this same child, if he's removed from that school system and put into the mainstream school, hmm. he gets that kind of psycho that he is not up to the level of the children of the other school and he takes yeah. in, takes into that. And that is why we advocate for inclusion and accessibility uh, as a mainstream mm -hmm. uh, into the environment uh, that yeah. we live in. You know, one uh, aspect so of this... So in education... Yes. Yeah. And uh, apart from this, um, yeah, uh, education is uh, uh, one uh, component in which CBM is definitely working. And uh, we also have a few number of projects around the world on education in which we promote the inclusive education yeah. systems. Uh, that is uh, education for all. Yeah. And also something that I'm really interesting whilst I was sort of, you know, reading up for the show is about what I mentioned before about dif about disability being divided into modes. And when we talk about permanent uh, disabilities, which is, you know, which includes blindness or deafness or, or cognitive ones, they're also temporary ones. And I thought that that was also very interesting, uh, given what Atif also mentioned about uh, COVID-19 and how so many of us are having to work from home and study from home. But it's also situational. Disability can be situational, which means that it it's that hampering that I mentioned previously. Uh, you are being, um, things are getting in the way between you and sort of healthy output. And that also includes access to the internet, slow connections, um, you know, sort of limited access to devices that can that can help you access the, the rest of the world. And I thought that that was something also that seems really important because especially with the pandemic, and we've been looking at so many developing countries where children's access to education has been gravely hampered by their lack of access to a device or internet even. And that's also something Very that true. we should be Very considering. Very true. Uh, COVID-19 has indeed uh, played a role in maybe closing doors for a few international organizations or companies. Mm. At the same time, it has opened a few new windows for communication, and especially in the lines of communication. Yeah. More communication goes into Zoom, Skype, uh, through the, uh, um, the WhatsApp and the uh, devices that we have. Now, barriers to accessibilities are basically obstacles that make it difficult and sometimes impossible for people with disabilities to do things most of us take for granted. Um, there are different types of disabilities, like you mentioned, there are mild and severe yep. uh, disabilities. But what we say regarding the mild uh, disabilities, or for example, physical disabilities, is that there is always a way out. It is a barrier not that is there, it is a barrier that we have included and we need to remove out those barriers. For example, simply going for shopping, uh, working uh, or taking up a job or taking up public transport independently, that is the kind of thing that a person with mild disability no. or a person with a wheelchair can also uh, have an access to. Now, well, um, hmm. the, but if we don't have, if we don't have instructions in pictures that somebody who can't read can understand, or we can't, or we don't have um, announcements 
on a train or on you know the metro bus that don't have a written script going alongside that somebody who can read but can't hear can see we're automatically sort of making spaces exclusive to people like that and i I can't even imagine how difficult it must be to sort of navigate the world without these um, things. And, and I believe that, again, coming back to the sort of tech side of it, there are a lot of solutions that we can have, for example, on a website, which can address these issues in a really simple way. And a lot of them are just tech-based solutions. So Asif, can you tell me about sort of common common issues that people with disabilities do face when they are navig issues of accessibility that people with disabilities face when they're using you know a computer programs or websites or things uh, when we talk about disability uh, categorizing disability the, 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 the short term disability or the long term disability again i would emphasize that we have to see disability from the accessibility perspective yeah. when we are not able to it is then disability is created. And on a lighter note, the temporary disability is when, when you have turned off the lights and you have to be newspaper. You can't do that. No. This is temporary disability. Yes. Short term disability. So you turn on the lights and disability is gone. You yes. can read newspaper. Similarly, similarly, now most of the websites in the world are accessible for the blind people. Because it's just about the coding. And if the coding is very accessible, whole website will become screen reader friendly. There are many screen readers available in the world. Some of them are free source. You can just download, install in your computer, and people with disabilities can read the books, can access this in the website. Yeah. And, but but websites yeah. should be have that kind of coding to be aligned with the screen reader, mm. to be accessible to screen readers. So in Pakistan, uh, we have, for the first time, included in Pakistan digital policy, which is still a draft policy, that all the websites made in Pakistan should be accessible. We have recently right. established an example. Yeah, we have, established, we have developed a mobile application, which is called Equal Access, which uh -huh. is now being available on our, our iOS and the Google uh, Apple Store and Google uh, Play Store. You can download and this website gives you the whole idea. What is it? Digital accessibility. It is multiple like accessible. I will I mean, uh, mention the name of the game so that people who are watching this program and they want to access the information, huh. we can download. Equal access. Equal access. So, equal access. Right. They can download and they can understand accessibility. They can and they can get the real knowledge about all the facilities, mm -hmm. including how they can get ID card, how they can access the disability certificate services, everything. Excellent. I'm so happy to hear that, and I think that this again. Uh, Global Accessibility Awareness Day is something, it's a conversation that we can keep having. And thank you so much, Atif, and thank you so much, Muhammad Ali, for joining me today to kind of unravel a little bit the sort of tip of the iceberg, to approach the tip of the iceberg about this conversation. It is so heartening, though, to know that the conversation is happening and that more and more people are better able to understand the needs of people with disabilities who are just as talented, just as smart, just as capable as anybody else. But like if so rightly pointed out, if you switch off the lights, nobody can read the newspaper. We need to turn on the lights for as many people as we can. Millions of people, not just in our country, but around the world. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on The Coffee Table. Bye.